From our studios at the corner of 8th and Walton in Bentonville, Arkansas, welcome to Saturday Morning Meeting, brought to you in part by Dun & Bradstreet Credibility Corp. Saturday Morning Meeting covers Walmart, Sam's Club, and the consumer product companies that are represented on the racks and shelves throughout the country and around the world. I'm Derek Reidenauer, and our focus is on the insights, trends, and best practices to help you as a supplier grow your business with the world's largest retailer. Thank you for joining us, and coming up today, I'll be talking with Mike Malone of the Northwest Arkansas Council and reviewing this week's top news stories with me are Colby Beelan and Andy Shook. But first, the headlines. Walmart announced lower fourth quarter profits this week, leading to a 1% decline of its share price. According to the Associated Press, fourth quarter earnings were down 21%. Walmart points to several factors triggering the decline, including higher Social Security payroll taxes and cuts in the food stamp program, as well as weather. Revenue is up and comp store sales are down. Walmart recently held its Global Sustainability Milestone Meeting, announcing that it is ahead of schedule on meeting its sustainability goals. Environmental Leader reports that Walmart has made great strides in reducing energy consumption as well as increasing stores designed with LED lighting. Walmart pledged at the meeting to shift stores to 100% renewable energy by 2020. Another revelation from the Sustainability Milestone Meeting was the unveiling of a new style of fleet truck known as the Walmart Advanced Vehicle Experience, or WAVE. Transport Topics reports that the trucks feature a microturbine hybrid powertrain and a trailer constructed from lightweight carbon fiber. Walmart also discussed its plans to develop more sustainable trucks that run on alternative fuels such as natural gas and grease. Mike Rowe, former host of Discovery Channel's Dirty Jobs, recently defended his decision to narrate Walmart's American manufacturing commercials. According to Ad Age, many individuals criticized Rowe for his decision to work with the retailer, with the controversy spilling over onto Rowe's Facebook page. Rowe maintains that regardless of how people feel about Walmart, everyone should be able to get behind an increase in American manufacturing jobs. Suppliers take note, slow and steady wins a day, according to CEO of Global Commerce at Walmart, Neil Ash. AdAge reports that at the Interactive Advertising Bureau's annual leadership meeting, Ash remarked on the importance of keeping focused on Walmart's concerns rather than meeting sales numbers. Instead of getting impatient, Ash says suppliers should realize that a carefully negotiated deal better meets the needs of both parties. AL.com reports that a recent study by Dashlane questioned the online password policies of several retailers, including Walmart. Dashlane criticized retailers for not requiring strong passwords or sending passwords to customers in plain text. Criticism of Walmart focused on its allowing customers more than 10 login attempts before lo locking the account. Check out Walmart and Supplier News as it's reported on walmartnewsnow.com. And we're joined now by our panel, Colby Bielan from K Stack and Andy Shook from Shook Up Sales Strategy. It's a mouthful, by the way, Andy. It is. Thanks it for is. joining us. Um, headlines, big news to, to this week is Walmart missed their earnings by about 21%. So a pretty significant number. They're blaming weather as well as some other factors. Colby? Weather is absolutely a key. Uh, this has been the worst six weeks of any fiscal year beginning that I can think mm -hmm. of. Uh, somebody that travels professionally for a living had to cancel numerous flights, have been stuck in numerous airports for hours with on end. As a company that transports product to Walmart, uh, there have been significant challenges uh, in both the Northeast, the Southeast, and the Midwest part of the United States for the first six weeks of the year as far as getting trucks in and out to Walmart. So if we can't get product to Walmart, uh, that means there's product, not product on the shelf to sell. So if you can't sell it, you can't earn revenue. So. Well, they also cited food stamps as being another, another big issue. Um, one out of, I think it's one out of five. One out of five. One out of five is what uh, used to food stamps at Walmart. And obviously that's going to be, that's going to be a big issue. I mean, if you've got that many people that have that much less to spend right. on food stamps, that's definitely going to be a big That's decided um, some exit strategies in Brazil that they were got closing some stores as well as India. We've, we've talked about the, them getting out of India and some changes going on there. So obviously there's some charges there. What do you think they do to go to, to kind of correct this for first quarter? I mean, we're three weeks in, four weeks in now to the first quarter. What we still have some weather. We had some weather this year that, or so far this month. What do they do? How do they fix this, Colby? I don't. I don't know if you can fix it in a quarter. Um, the the challenges are are there. They're real. Um, you know, last time I was here, we were talking about the. Uh, excitement that economists were showing for the year, and I was kind of gloom and doom then. And uh, turns out you were right. <laughs> so that's good. <laughs> I, I, I don't. I don't see this being any different uh, currently. Uh, it, they've they've got an uphill battle. They've got a lot of competition. Their competition's coming at them hard, and 
So in addition to... Well, and then the economy. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's not like they're just fighting against competition, but they're also fighting against the economy. And I think that's going to be the biggest battle that they're going to have with some of the policies that are in place and just everything that's just kind of happening, you know, throughout Fuel the U.S. prices right are now. on the rise. Uh, it's going to impact expendable income from a certain consumer base that shops at Walmart. And uh, now you got the government talking about a, almost a 30% increase in uh, minimum wage, which obviously isn't going to impact short term, but uh, as consumers and, re uh, excuse me, employers are mm. considering that, it may cause, if they start talking to their employees, it may cause their employees' concern to go out and spend money right. if there's talk of maybe I'm going to lose my job. So. Well, the good news is they're going to be able to anniversary this next year. So yes. down, they hopefully we'll turn around. And by this time next year, we're talking about some better stories. Mm. I want to move on to another story that has been in the news a lot lately, and as it relates to Walmart, is the Mike Rowe commercial that, that Walmart launched during the Olympics about bringing $250 billion back to the U.S. economy and jobs. Now, as I saw this commercial, I thought anybody who sees this has to really support this and like it. And I think most people did right up until the last second when it says Walmart. Walmart. Yeah. Andy, I'll start with you. Well, first of all, it's the Mike Rowe voice, right? And he's right. got this nice, beautiful voice that everybody likes hearing and whatnot. So you don't even know how many people associate that necessarily with him. Um, but, but obviously there's enough people that have because that's kind of where the story came from. You know, people are critics of his kind of, you know, criticizing him right. for being a part of this. And I think he was defending Walmart in it, wasn't he? Well, he in, was just in, doing the voiceover. I mean, just... Yeah. But he was defending Walmart and, and kind of why, I think, and when they went, went back and forth with the, uh, some of the comments and things that were coming into his uh, Twitter feeds and that kind of stuff, whatnot. So he wrote a dissertation on Facebook about the comments, and he addressed several of them you know, head on. The bottom line is Mike Rowe is doing a job. Yeah. He, he is not exactly. branding himself with Walmart. Walmart paid him to do a service. He performed a service no different than Ford, no different than Discover, Discover Channel. Um, I mean, Mike was doing a job, so it's not and who better? Mike. Who better? I mean, he was the perfect candidate, in my opinion, to, to do this Absolutely. with the dirty jobs uh, show that he had. And he's always been about work and doing jobs, and he's got a uh, dirty jobs, which is a product actually in Walmart, Walmart. that he's yeah. a spokesperson for. So it makes sense to have him. And the interesting thing that I uh, that I've read some of the critics and and followed them, some of the people who are criticizing this move not just him, but Walmart bringing jobs back to America, are the same people who would criticize Walmart for taking jobs to, to China or exporting those jobs. So it's interesting to see how somebody can be a critic on both of those parts. You know, it, it's, it's really sad because w when you look at what Walmart's trying to do, it, they, get, they get so many people criticizing them um, for, it, it, it's regardless of whatever they do, whatever move they make, no matter what they do, there's always those that are going to criticize what they're doing. And, you know, hopefully, I think through this whole thing, is Walmart just kind of stands their ground on what they believe in. And it is the right thing to bring jobs to America. How many people really do you know is. that criticize Walmart that shop at Walmart? Exactly. Well, that's true. I mean, you, it's one thing to criticize. It's another thing to completely not support. At the end of the day, we're consumers, and we're going to probably go buy where we can afford to to shop or to get the best yeah. price so we have you know the most bang for our well, and it's not just about criticizing Walmart this is I, I take this a step further that this is also criticizing some of those manufacturing companies that are coming back that are bringing jobs and reopening those plants Haynes opened up a big plant in South Carolina I mean how's that a bad thing I, it's not a yeah bad and I don't think the people in those communities are going to complain at all Absolutely. they're going to be happy that those jobs are back in the US and and everybody that supports them you know the hairstylists the grocers all the people around those people as well Everybody complained about all the jobs that went overseas, and now you want to complain that the jobs are potentially coming back? It doesn't make any sense. Doesn't make sense. Yeah. Okay, we're going to move on to another topic. We've got about a minute and a half left. Walmart announced this week, and they showed video of their brand new trucks that they're putting rolling out, the Wave oh. fleet. Cole, well, you're in you're in transportation. You're moving freight. I'm going to I'm going to know what your thoughts are on on these new trucks. It's a very cool concept uh, to see it. I'm very excited about it, but. In reality, uh, you're probably looking 10 years down the road before, no. you, before you can even see it implemented. No, these things are too cool. Yeah. they got to come they're out. I mean, oh, they're, they're oh, they cool. look so cool, though. They're very cool, but Walmart has 61,000 uh, uh, trailers and about 6,500 tractors. Oh. They have a very long life on the road. I mean, as a company that's managing a P&L, you're not going to just... See, when I saw well, that truck, when I saw that article and I saw that truck, I wanted to become a truck driver. 
I don't blame you. I mean, <laughs> those are cool. I mean, I mean, I mean they want to drive could the sit tractor. In the I don't want to pull I mean, it's the like, it's like it was like a Jetson thing. It was like, you oh, know, you get in and you kind of have this, like, all this remote stuff was going to happen. I don't know. It, oh, it just looked cool. awfully cool. Well, and they just bought some new trucks. I think to your point, Colby, they, they just bought a bunch of new trucks when they ended Project Impact. And so when you've gone out and bought all of those, those are not cheap. They're $100,000 a piece to the on trucks. Mm -hmm. That's a big thing to just now shelve those. And they they bought fuel efficient trucks, so that they were they were mm. purchasing for their sustainability initiatives. Um, they may be able to get one or two into the fleet to say they have them, but long term, I mean, you're looking several years down. All right, yeah. guys, thank you very much. We're out of time. Stick around. We will continue a Saturday morning meeting, and Mike Malone from the Northwest Arkansas Council will join us when we come back. GigWalk is an on-demand mobile workforce that can collect data and do work at retail. Businesses use GigWalk for retail audits, merchandising, and much more. With 350,000 smartphone-enabled workers available on-demand, you get unprecedented speed and coverage across the U.S., Canada, and the U.K. And all work is reviewed for quality and accuracy. Visit GigWalk.com to learn more. Imagine what it would be like if you knew the weather up to a year in advance. What would you do differently for your business or your life? At Weather Trends, we don't imagine it, we do it. We're a team of meteorologists, mathematicians, and business weather advisors, and we've spent the last 20 years developing a new way to forecast months in advance. We've been studying weather's effect on product sales based on every one degree change in temperature. We can now take your sales data and show you exactly how the weather impacts your business down to a single degree. We're leading the way into a new era in forecasting and a new power in business decisions. And we invite you to join us. Welcome to Weather Trend. Eighth and Walton, the premier destination for Walmart supplier education. When and where you want to learn. Current, accurate, relevant, taught by suppliers for suppliers. Eighth and Walton. Beaver Lake serves as the drinking water source for one in seven Arkansans. Did you know that your actions can impact the quality of water in Beaver Lake? The Beaver Watershed Alliance is working to proactively protect, enhance, and sustain the water quality of Beaver Lake. With the help of partners, volunteers, and people like you, the Alliance is making a difference in Northwest Arkansas. Please learn more about your role in preserving the water quality of the Beaver Watershed and about how you can get actively involved. Visit beaverwatershedalliance.org. Beaver Watershed, our environment, our health, our home. Eighth and Walton, the premier destination for Walmart supplier education. When and where you want to learn. Current, accurate, relevant, taught by suppliers, for suppliers. Eighth and Walton. And welcome back to Saturday Morning Meeting. We're joined now by Mike Malone. He's the President and CEO of Northwest Arkansas Council. Welcome, Mike. Thank you. Let's real quick, let's start with what is the Northwest Arkansas Council and what do you, why are, do you guys exist? Sure. Uh, we're a 25-year-old nonprofit organization that was created by a lot of the area's business and civic leaders at the time. Folks like Mr. Sam Walton and John and Don Tyson, Mark Simmons, J.B. Hunt, who came together and said we really need a regional focus to allow our companies and businesses to scale. Now it's kind of quaint to think about it, but at the time they were regional companies that had a vision of scaling nationally. And so by promoting this idea that Northwest Arkansas is one great region, it combined resources and got a focus on some of the things needed to help them scale and help them grow, brought us infrastructure, brought us some great water and wastewater projects. The airport was a product of the work along the years. We, today we still work to try to grow and promote Northwest Arkansas as one great region. Now one of the things that I know you guys are involved in is helping recruiters and helping companies like Walmart, Tyson, J.B. Hunt, but also some of the supplier teams here which kind of have a, a, they have a lot of people coming in and out. Right. What are one of the obstacles that you see of Northwest Arkansas as, right. as people are trying to relocate here or being offered jobs here? Right. Well, Northwest Arkansas is absolutely a collector of talent and, and we want to continue that. We actually want to accelerate that because that'll make this region even greater. 
So we try to help companies, recruiters at companies with materials that showcase Northwest Arkansas, that tell the story of why it's such a great opportunity, some uh, competitive assessments that, that uh, compare us to peer regions around the country, online videos that show the, the natural environment and the dynamic business environment. So a lot of resources for recruiters. Our organization's also trying to do some targeted marketing uh, in trade journals and publications, especially around those fields that we're best at, retail, food processing, and logistics, uh, to try to get positive mentions in trade journal publications and uh, join the buzz that's out there and, and tell the story of Northwest Arkansas in that way. Rather than buying ads in trade right. journals and business publications, we're trying to get in the actual stories. Now, as you guys seek to try to help bring jobs here as well, because obviously that, that's how you grow, um, Let's talk about the difference between a manufacturing job, very similar to what Tyson has, or mm -hmm. what Simmons Foods has, uh, versus headquarter jobs, mm -hmm. J.B. Hunt, uh, Tyson as well, but Walmart. What's the difference between that and which is really, is there a focus on one or the other? We want them all. Uh, as long as they're high wage, high quality, knowledge based jobs or high skilled jobs, we want them. Uh, Northwest Arkansas is seven times the national average in headquarters jobs here. Uh, that's the highest concentration of white collar headquarters jobs of any metro in the country. Uh, and we love that and that number is going up, that percentage is going up and we want to keep that going. But to make sure our economy is balanced, we also need to make sure that we're grow training workers for uh, and, and aiming uh, our students towards skills based uh, technical jobs. So uh, we got to make sure our workforce system's there to, to get people into uh, high skilled manufacturing positions, we need more welders, we need more uh, coders, we need more graphic designers, uh, and that's a way to keep our economic mix much more balanced. We, we need the high wage, white collar jobs, we also have plenty of service industry jobs, and, and it's kind of the middle wage jobs that we're also focused on as well. And and we want role, it all. What role does University of Arkansas play in this? Because they're obviously doing a very good job with some of their retail development and their, mm -hmm. their logistics stuff, but what are some other things that they're doing to really kind of help pull people here? Well, the university itself is a great draw. Um, the research focus of the university has always been great for academic purposes, but the university lately uh, has uh, been focused on commercializing research. And that's so exciting here in Northwest Arkansas. That, so that's taking research, uh, in a lot of times in fields that we're, are our centers of excellence in the region, retailing, food, and logistics. But taking that research and turning it into a real product, uh, mm -hmm. taking that research and turning it into something that could be sold or manufactured. And so we're starting to see some breakout companies that grew from research at the university. Another large growth sector of our economy uh, is around startups and entrepreneurial activities. We've seen some technology companies formed last year, a couple years ago, that are starting to get outside venture investment. And that's happening right here in Northwest Arkansas. And that adds to the, the mix or the blend of employers here. We love it. Well, I know that Innovate Arkansas does quite a bit in Fayetteville, cooperating mm -hmm. with the university. Mm -hmm. What impact are they having, or do you? The, uh, Innovate Arkansas is a great state of Arkansas supported program to help technology and early stage startups grow. Uh, and, and they've got a, a real disproportionate share of the Arkansas companies are here in Northwest Arkansas. And so as a guy that promotes Northwest Arkansas, I love that. When we come back, we will continue our conversation with Mike Malone, President and CEO of the Northwest Arkansas Council. The Saturday morning meeting continues. K-Stack, the leader in collaborative retail consolidation programs. We offer the supply chain expertise needed to navigate the challenges of selling products with the world's largest retailers. And we provide customers with a customizable, scalable, environmentally sustainable supply chain with the same advanced technology typically used by larger rivals. By leveling the playing field, K-Stack lowers distribution costs and increases overall margins. K-Stack, retail logistics is what we do. New TV. Hi, TV. Did he just say hi to the TV? Uh-huh. Wait, is this Hulu from the computer Hulu? It's Hulu Plus. Uh, this looks cool. Which one of you yahoos put our TV on the curb? Oh, hello. What are we watching? Bathing monkeys. Uh, no, those are macaques. Get out of my seat. Looks relaxing. TV has never been better. This is Smart TV from Samsung. 
You know, the biggest challenge of working with Walmart is they really expect everyone on the team to know their language, know their terminology, and know exactly how they do business. So that's where Ethan Walden really comes into play. You know, it's the fastest way to get my team members up to speed. Their business model is suppliers teaching suppliers. So when you come to Ethan Walton, you can count on having very experienced trainers who understand how suppliers work within Walmart, and they take advantage of that and incorporate that into their curriculum. Beaver Lake serves as the drinking water source for one in seven Arkansans. Did you know that your actions can impact the quality of water in Beaver Lake? The Beaver Watershed Alliance is working to proactively protect, enhance, and sustain the water quality of Beaver Lake. With the help of partners, volunteers, and people like you, the Alliance is making a difference in Northwest Arkansas. Please learn more about your role in preserving the water quality of the Beaver Watershed and about how you can get actively involved. Visit beaverwatershedalliance.org. Beaver Watershed, our environment, our health, our home. Are you a single parent struggling to meet your family's needs? Single Parent Scholarship Fund is here to help. Single Parent Scholarship Fund of Northwest Arkansas helps hundreds of single parents get an education. By providing scholarships and support, a brighter future is right around the corner for you and your family. I'm Andrea. I'm a 2011 UA graduate with a degree in elementary education. Single Parent Scholarship Fund made that possible. My son Jaden is proud of his mama and it's inspired him to do well in school. And welcome back to Saturday Morning Meeting. We're continuing our conversation with Mike Malone, President and CEO of the Northwest Arkansas Council. Mike, before we went to break, we are talking about Innovate Arkansas and some of the, uh, the things that they're doing, particularly mm -hmm. here in Northwest Arkansas. But let's continue that conversation because they're doing a lot to help grow small businesses. Right. The Innovate Arkansas provides mentorship, and that's critical to so many small businesses. Somebody has an idea or a dream, they need to figure out how to build a business around it. So Innovate's a great resource there. There's a small business development center also that's at the University of Arkansas that's another great resource. Mentorship is a key piece of building the startup economy here in Northwest Arkansas, but we also need uh, shared work environments for people that maybe have started their company out of their spare bedroom or their garage and they need to graduate to workspace. So that's a piece of it, but capital is really the the key missing piece in some cases. And so a lot of efforts have, have gone into creating an angel investor network, uh, some early stage investment funds. We don't have a Northwest Arkansas based venture capital fund yet, but folks are talking about it and they're working on it. They could invest for companies that are 500,000 to 5 million. And so hopefully we'll see that come online soon. All right, let's talk about infrastructure because anybody who's sat on the 540 parking lot trying to get home or get to work knows how frustrating that can right. be. Some things are being changed, but does the infrastructure as it exists today hurt all of your progress and all of your efforts to recruit companies to come here? I don't know that, it may have slowed our rate of growth, but we're still growing. We've got one of the top population growth rates in the country. Uh, Northwest Arkansas was the fourth fastest rate of employment growth out of all regions out of the entire country last year. So. Um, it, it may, we might have been first, but, but so far it hasn't uh, completely hindered our growth. But if we don't get our arms around it, it will. And so that's why I'm real excited that uh, state voters approved a sales tax increase. It's a sales tax, I know that hurts, but it's going toward building uh, interstates and highways around the state. Northwest Arkansas is gonna get about 600 million of highway projects over the next three to four years because voters chose to invest in the highway infrastructure. Uh, we'll get a widening of I-540, a uh, two-lane corridor that'll free, free flow around Bella Vista and on into Missouri, and then also the start of an east-west interstate that's been talked about for about okay. three decades, the Springdale Northern Bypass. Let's talk about um, airfares. Mm -hmm. uh, how, as we're talking about infrastructure, the airport's a, a great right. airport here. I mean, I travel uh, quite a bit. Uh, but the one thing that I consistently ha struggle with on my own, but also hear from other people, is it's so expensive to fly to Northwest I, Arkansas. I, I, I realize that. you guys don't control the airfares, right. but do those high airfares affect companies wanting to move here because it's going to cost so much to fly them back to headquarters or to fly them out to see customers? I think so. When we hear anecdotally that it does, we've heard some examples of businesses that needed to expand and chose to expand in a different location than here. So that really hurts. Uh, it's something that is being worked on, actively worked on. Um, and so what I would say is 
for an airport of our size and a region of our size, we're incredibly well served in number of destinations, number of nonstop flights each day. Not many regions of 500,000 people are going to have 15 nonstop destinations. Great service and a beautiful facility is important, but competitive airfares is, is the key missing piece here. So um, XNA, the leadership, is actively recruiting low-cost carriers to try to add some competition into the air, airline mix that they have there at the airport. Uh, they're getting positive response, I think, from some of the six low-cost carriers that are out there. I can't say today, I don't know that we'll get one in short order, but I, I'm as encouraged by the dialogue and the interest that some of the low-cost carriers are showing in the airport. The key, if it, when, I guess I should say when, <laughs> XNA recruits a low-cost carrier, a key will be that the traveling public has to start flying at those lower fares on that carrier. Even if you've got loyalty points or miles on some of the other airlines, the low-cost carriers are businesses and they're going to want right. to have some revenues here too. So okay. when XNA lands a low-cost carrier, it's going to be uh, up to all of us to choose to fly with them to make sure they understand this is a great market for them. Okay. Um, Credit Donkey, back in the first part of the year, had an article came out, ranked Northwest Arkansas, specifically Benton County, as one of the top places, number two. Right. How, how does that help you? We love the places uh, ranked acknowledgments, and um, we get a lot of them. Um, they come out pretty regularly, best place to live, best place to do business, best place to retire, for example. Uh, they are absolutely great. Our recruiters use them. We promote them as well. One of the things, though, a lot of the cutoffs for places rated list is uh, the markets that are 100 and larger. And we're 106 right now in population size in Northwest Arkansas. So we'd be even higher on some of those lists if we were slightly larger. All right, and we're going to have to leave it there. Actually, I have one more question, then we have to leave it. Okay. What keeps you up at night? Sustaining the momentum keeps me up at night. Hopefully, you can continue to do that. Yeah. Mike, thank you very much for coming in. We'll be right back on Saturday morning meeting. Bentonville Plaza, across the street from the Walmart home office. The best office location for businesses working with the world's largest retailer. Bentonville Plaza offers proximity and services like no other business complex in the area, including custom designed suites and an on-site fitness center and restaurant. Pre-leasing opportunities are currently available for new construction. Call 479-200-1112 today. 8th and Walton, the premier destination for Walmart supplier education. When and where you want to learn. Current, accurate, relevant, taught by suppliers for suppliers. 8th and Walton. Are you a single parent struggling to meet your family's needs? Single Parent Scholarship Fund is here to help. Single Parent Scholarship Fund of Northwest Arkansas helps hundreds of single parents get an education. By providing scholarships and support, a brighter future is right around the corner for you and your family. I'm Andrea. I'm a 2011 UA graduate with a degree in elementary education. Single Parent Scholarship Fund made that possible. My son Jaden is proud of his mama and it's inspired him to do well in school. I would recommend 8th and Walton to other suppliers because from my experience talking to other suppliers, they were even learning new ideas or just new and better business practices. Most people have little time for training, and so 8th and Walton is a perfect opportunity to send your new employees to understand the retailing system. And again, because trainers or suppliers, they know the how and the why, so they become very valuable very quickly. Beaver Lake serves as the drinking water source for one in seven Arkansans. Did you know that your actions can impact the quality of water in Beaver Lake? The Beaver Watershed Alliance is working to proactively protect, enhance, and sustain the water quality of Beaver Lake. With the help of partners, volunteers, and people like you, the Alliance is making a difference in Northwest Arkansas. Please learn more about your role in preserving the water quality of the Beaver Watershed and about how you can get actively involved. Visit beaverwatershedalliance.org. Beaver Watershed, our environment, our health, our home. 8th and Walton, the premier destination for Walmart supplier education. When and where you want to learn. Current, accurate, relevant, taught by suppliers, for suppliers. 8th and Walton. Our thanks to Mike Malone and today's panelists as well. And as always, we appreciate you taking the time to join us. If you have questions or comments, we'd love to hear from you. The email is Saturday at 8thandwalton.com. Please join us next week. Our featured guest is going to be David Hale of Gigwalk. 
I'm Derek Ridenauer, and from all of us at Saturday Morning Meeting, thanks for watching. We'll see you next Saturday.